All right, you have in front of you, like I said, today we're going to be talking about life in the ocean. And we're going to be taking notes on that. So you have a piece of paper that has some clouds on it. And then on the other side, it's blank. I want you to turn over to the blank side where the holes are on the left so that we can write and take notes on the blank side. You will be writing notes today on this side of your paper. I do not want to hear any complaining about the notes that we're taking because you're writing it once, I'm writing it four times. I'm sorry. I have to adjust this camera, so please excuse me for a second. You won't need to move up. It's over there. You, you got you. You're good with the pencil you have right now. All right. Go ahead, Brian, and come on, move up to the front front. All righty, I'm going to get started. As we're taking our notes, it is very important that you write the notes just like me. So if I'm writing on a certain side of the paper, you need to also write on that certain side of the paper. If I'm underlining it, you need to underline it. Just bear with me a moment. My camera is a little bit touchy right now. Okay. You're fine right there. Alrighty. So the title of our notes is called Life in the Ocean. So at the very top of your paper, you want to write Life in the Ocean. And these are your notes. All right, everyone good? Notice it's going to probably get a little um, blurry for a moment, and then it'll get back um, focused. All right. So we're going to start off by talking about how life in the ocean, which is called marine life, how those things are grouped, how life in the ocean is grouped. So over to the left side, we're going to put a category here, and this is going to be called marine life is grouped based on, and it's grouped based on two things. One of the things that it's grouped on, and marine life, we're talking, when we say it's, we're talking about marine life, things that live in um, the ocean or live in water. We're going to say that they're grouped on based on where they live So we have a certain area where things live. And they're also based on how they move. So if a certain thing swims, then it's going to be, if it has the lung capacity to swim in the deep, that means that's where they live and it's how they move. For instance, we're based on how we move and, and where we live as well because we have feet so we can swim, but we can't live there because we walk, so we have to be on land. Any questions about that? So far so good? Right. This is where uh, this is um, is grouped based on those plankton, nectar, all that stuff that we have. They're named that because of these two categories, 
and we're about to go right through that good question so right underneath there i'm not going to start way over here to the left because this is still talking about marine life so underneath there i'm going to create another category and it's going to be called three kinds of marine life now these three kinds are called this because of the groups that we put them in where they live and how they move what are the three kinds from your reading yesterday? What were three kinds? Bryson, give me one. Plankton. Plankton. Give me another one, Jamil. Nectin. Patrick. Uh, Benthos. Benthos. And we're going to break these down. So one kind, we're going to start with the smallest one, which is plankton. Now, plankton, we put things in the plankton category because of how they move. How did plankton move? What did you find out yesterday, Ray? They drift. they drift and they float. So we'll say they float and they drift. They're kind of drifters. And they do that within the water. Good? Yeah. Okay. There are two types of plankton. How should we organize or outline, outline that? Um, Duran. Okay. So we can bullet it down here or we can even list them A and B. Is that fine? Okay. So we have A and we have B and we have two types of plankton. And what were they, Janie? Phytoplankton and zooplankton. And actually, it's zooplankton, but if you say zooplankton, that's fine. Now, what do we know about phytoplankton? Madison? Plant. It's plant-like. How can you know that that's plant-like? What word do you see in uh, phytoplankton? Um, Eddie? Phyto, where'd that come from? What word is that? photosynthesis. So they go through the process of using sunlight to make their own food. Zooplankton, what do you think that is? It is animal plankton. And how do you figure that out? Zoo. And zoo means animal. Now, in SpongeBob, what type of plankton do you think that is? Duran. So he says zooplankton. What do you think, Patrick? Okay, Duran, why do you think it's zooplankton? Because it, 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 it moves around. Both of them move around. Why do you, Patrick, why do you think it's um, zo uh, phytoplankton? Because. We're not in second grade. Devin? I think it's zooplankton because I see all the sea plankton. Okay. <laughs> Okay, keep in mind I told you there's a lot of discrepancies in SpongeBob. So some of those things you're telling me, those are discrepancies all together. But I like the way you're using your brain. Ray. Um, I say it's zooplankton also because he doesn't produce any food for any of the animals. He's not a plant for this animal. What color is he? Green. So what do you think he is? Phytoplankton. All of those other things are discrepancies. All right, this is my take on it. Okay, then we have two other kinds of marine life. So listing a second one. Another one that was mentioned is nectin. How do nectin move? From your reading yesterday, how does nectin move? Bryson, they swim freely, yep. And then we have our third one, which is benthos. And where do benthos live and how do they swim? Notice we're breaking it down into these two categories. Um, Eddie, where do they live? So what is that? Where is that? They live at the bottom. They live, actually, we're going to say on 
the ocean floor. So that's the bottom. And they don't really swim fully, they just stay in their bottom area. Any questions so far? Can I move on? So, so far we've talked about marine life. And we talked about the living things of marine life. We're going to move on and now talk about these environments. Because we talked about the uh, marine life, how they move. But we need to talk about these places that they live. And the places that they live are called their environment. So we need to look at the different environments of marine so we can see why they live there and why those environments exist. So bear with me a moment while I adjust this camera. Okay. So now let's talk about our next category and we're starting over to the very, I apologize for this camera being so temperamental. Okay, good. I'm just going to bring this down just for a second and then I'll pull it back up because I want you to see where I'm starting. I'm starting over in the margin right where it lines up with this margin where you see my finger because it's kind of like a new category, but it's still all life in the ocean. So I'm going to call this marine environments, also known as zones, which is what you read yesterday, are affected by so we're looking at marine environments and we're going to look at what they're affected by. And now I'll move up. And in your reading yesterday, you've noticed that they're affected by two things. What affects marine environments? The water depth. And what else? Thank you for raising your hand the amount of sunlight. And then we're going to talk about these different zones. So right underneath here, it's another category under here. We're going to call it marine environment. Uh, it should be our environment or zones. What are those zones? Give me one. Come on, Dre. Uh, when your hand's up, I'm expecting the answer. Janie. Intertidal. Give me another one. Benthic. Benthic. Neuritic. Yeah, one more. Oceanic. Oceanic. Now, I want you to see how much paper I have available. I have this much space available, and this is how much space about you should have, or even more, because we don't want to add any more paper to this. So if you're not writing small, you need to because we're going to cover all four zones here. All right? As I get this leveled. Come on. So I can make that work. All righty. I'm using my water bottle to hold up the camera. Camera's kind of tipping down. So here we go. So we're going to start with the closest zone. And I'm just going to move over just to give me some space. We're going to start with our first zone that we would encounter, which is called the 
That's not the first zone we would encounter. The zone we would first encounter would be the intertidal zone. Well, it's called the... What part of the ocean floor do you think would be at the intertidal zone, Brian? Continental shelf. What things do you think will affect that zone as well? Because it says amount of water or water depth. Tide. Enter means within. Tidal is the tide. So this is within the tides. Got that? Okay. So the intertidal zone, because we know that it's near the continental shelf, or it is the continental shelf, this is near the shoreline. And everything changes with the what? With the tides. This is a dangerous place to live if you're a marine environment, isn't it? Because yeah. one day you may have a home, the next day might you might not. What else is there? Lots and lots of what? Animals, predators, including us. One day, little Johnny Crab is there. The next day, little Johnny Crab is at Red Lobster. <laughs> exactly. All right. So let's talk about marine life that's in this uh, area. Some of the marine life that you would see in this area, like I said, little Johnny who? You'll see crabs here. You're also going to see snails here. There'll be clams here. Bryson? Stuff. Well, all over the place. let me make sure I say this. These zones are where things normally are. Now, tides bring things in and tides think, take things out. Remember, things can it's open water. So there's no door in the water saying, ah, 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 you don't belong here. So things do frequent other areas, but these are the specific areas where they belong. Okay? Um, here you also see sea stars. And keep in mind, in this area, you're also going to see other animals that are not marine life, like birds and people and squirrels and things of that nature. Well, if you're in an area where squirrels come and they run around, they may end up over there. They not It's not normal, but they could. Um, they don't really belong there. But again, these are where things belong. These are where they actually live. Okay? Um, you also will see an anemones. <laughs> okay? And there'll be a little seagrass. So who from SpongeBob will live here? Patrick. You said Pat Patrick said Patrick or Devin said Patrick? Sandy will Sandy doesn't live here, but she will frequent as far as who marine life. Yeah. Mr. Krabs will live here. Patrick, you said? Gary. Gary. Yeah, Gary. All right, let's look at our second zone. Oh, and that baby bird they raised. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Our next zone is our neuritic zone. Please do ca not call it neurotic. This is your neuritic zone. This is the extended part of the continental shelf. It's shallow marine water. And when I say shallow, I don't mean like, oh, we just get in, comes up to our ankles. 
I mean shallow, like we can get it and it still comes up to our neck or even a little bit over our head. It's shallow for marine organisms, but it's not sh totally shallow to us because remember these shelf can extend far out to where it's an area your mom's like, come back, you're too far, but you still can be on the shelf. Uh, extended part of the continental shelf, and it's shallow marine water. Here is where you're going to have the most abundant marine life. The most abundant marine life. Which is why commercial fishing takes place here. So the fish that you buy in your grocery store, your um, trout and flounder and whiting and things of that nature, they go in this area to fish for it and then sell it to your grocery stores. In this area, it has lots of sunlight. And now let's talk about the marine life here. Notice I'm pulling that with stars. Uh, marine life here is going to be plankton, zoo, and uh, phyto. Mm -hmm. You're also going to have some seaweed here. Here's where you have your sea turtles. Yes? Um, take out a sheet of paper of yours. And you just staple, you just staple it to staple it to there. Um, you'll have dolphins in this area. Sponges. And your colorful fish. Yes. Sponge is an actual type of marine life. Well, they did that on there because it's a sponge, but that's where the sponge comes from because it's actually a sponge. All right. Moving on. Colorful fish. Colorful fish. The third type uh, there is four. Then we have the oceanic zone. This is the open open ocean or open waters. beyond the neuritic zone. It's your deep ocean. Marine life here. I'm just going to zoom down some so you can see me writing without this thing. Yes. What? I can't hear you. Wrong. What first word, honey? I spelled open wrong. <laughs> open. <laughs> I was typing ocean also. I mean writing ocean. 
Bear with me a moment while I get this camera situated. I'm sorry for all this jumping around with the camera. Bryson, are you really distracted by the ladder? All right. Here we go. I'll just do it from here. <coughs> Honey, not in the middle of our lesson. All right, marine life that's going to be in the open ocean. Plankton's also going to frequent here. Remember, it's going to drift. Um, you have whales here. Remember, whales eat plankton. Oh, let's go back for a second. What kind of um, SpongeBob characters would be in the neuritic zone? Pearl. 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 Who else? Oh, Plankton. SpongeBob. Is Pearl a dolphin or a whale? She won't be in the neuritic zone then. Um, Nemo would actually live in the neuritic zone. Dory. Squid, I, I, let me say something. Squidward's not in the neuritic zone. Yeah, yeah, that's good. SpongeBob Pep would be in the neuritic zone. Seahorse. Um, I also want to add in the neuritic zone. Let's add in the neuritic zone. We also have jellyfish. Jellyfish. Brian? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, so back to the oceanic zone. In the oceanic zone, we have plankton, whales, we have squid. There's sharks. And there's octopi. He is actually a squid. Because he has only six um, tentacles. Nemo would be in where the colorful fish, the neuritic zone. Yeah, that's where their home is, but that they frequent. They'll go back there, but then they'll frequent back into the neuritic zone. Good question. Yes. Yep. All right, moving to our last zone. Did you say they eat ink or? No, they ink. They produce ink, yeah. Our last zone is the benthic zone. This includes the entire ocean floor. I know you can't see, just give it a moment. So it includes the entire ocean floor bottom. It's very dark. Why is it very dark? No sunlight. It's, it's very cold. Why? No sunlight. It's very salinous. No, what's salinous? No, we talked about this word, salinity. Very salty. Because those things are going to... The water evaporates and those things sink to the bottom. Good. And it's high pressure. Which is why we can't frequent there because the pressure is so high. All right. Now, before we talk about the marine life here, 
We're going to go ahead and write down marine life. One second. We also need to note that the marine life, they're going to exhibit unique adaptations. What does it mean, adaptations? They have to adapt to a certain environment. They have to adapt to what type of environment? Oh, dark, 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 cold, and high, pressure. high pressure, and salty. So they have to be able to move, maneuver in the dark. They have to be able to sustain very cold areas, very salty areas, and pressure. They should be able to live down, down in the deep floor. So where the pressure is high, they should be fine. I can see you. You don't have to do this. I can see you just fine. Yes. Me? Nope. Jayla. Oh, uh, you know if I'm in Nemo and Nemo dead, they were like in the dark spot. Exactly. So the marine life that would be there would be their anglerfish. That's a real fish. That is a real fish. Yeah. Some other things. Uh, excuse me. You also have marine bacteria would be down there. Eels. They're called eels because then you look at them and you say eel. No, I'm just joking, but that's why I think. Notice eels are very flat. Why do you think so? Because of the amount of pressure. And they can, and they're bottom feeders, so they do swim along the bottom like that. You also have um, some sea urchin. My turn. My turn. And then there's also some sea worms or marine worms that live down there. Duran, I need you to get to the point, honey. I don't know. I, I would have to look up and see what kind of fish that is. Last question. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're going to now. Do you have a question about this right here? Can you hold off for a second? Yeah. Okay. Let's then flip our papers over to now where you have this sky looking thing. Now, it doesn't matter if your paper is with the holes on top or on the bottom, it doesn't matter. Come on, you have to move because your head's in the way. You got to move over. So you can have your holes on the top or on the bottom. It's perfectly fine. You have your colored pencils. We're going to actually illustrate our marine life with our ocean floor. Your drawing does not have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to be good, and you'll see with my drawing. So it doesn't, like, the reason why I picked this paper is because it simulated the background of the sky and things with the water. Normally, I just have all blue paper, but I couldn't find that this year. So this is why we have this type of paper. So here, again, put your papers down, and your holes can be at the top or on the bottom. But entering the ocean, we start off with a what? Continental shelf. So you can use your brown, you can use your pencil, you can use your reddish brown, it doesn't matter. So we're going to start off by drawing a continental shelf. And we're not going to color it in, we're just going to draw it.
and from here, Brian and Kawan, you can stay at your seat. You don't need to see my drawings. You just need, no, stay at your regular seat. Because you're using your notes and your knowledge. You don't have to draw exactly what I draw. All right, from the continental shelf, what happens? It starts to drop and give us the what? Continental slope. So we're going to just slope down. It's not perfect. But we're just going to make it as good as possible. And with our slope, maybe we'll put a little bit of a um, abyssal plane there. You don't have to have all your features. Uh, maybe I'll put a mid-ocean ridge, a rift valley. And then I'm just going to continue with more abyssal plane and just leave it like that for now. Um, you can add an ocean trench if you want. Okay, and we don't need to color it in, but we know that's the ocean floor, correct? All right. This pencil here, from this pencil going down is all what? From this pencil going down is all what? It's all this stuff in here. Water. So, does our water necessarily have to start here, or do we have tidal water here? So we're going to go ahead and start our water, even on the shelf, because we do have water on our shelf. And we're not going to color the water in, we're just going to demonstrate it with some waves. Are we good? Guys, we only drew the floor in water. Shouldn't take us that long. Now what zone is this here? Zone, listen to what I'm asking you. Intertidal zone. So we want to label that. as the intertidal zone. All right. So I got my shark. I'm also, um, that's our, that zone. Now, with that zone being done, this bottom zone here, it's called the what? This is your benthic zone. Yep, all of that floor, the bottom floor. This zone is very dark, so you might want to take your black pencil or your uh, regular pencil and just kind of shade it in because it's very dark. In your benthic zone, this is where you're going to have that angler fish. We already said that already. It is real. You, you can put an eel down there if you want. All right, so now let me ask you this. There is something called an aquatic terrestrial relationship. What is aquatic? Water. What's terrestrial? Land. Land. The reason why they call aliens extraterrestrial because they're out of this land. Extra means out of. So if I say identify in this picture an aquatic terrestrial relationship. Aquatic terrestrial relationship. Ray. 
Give me one is like the relationship between water and land. The relationship between things that live in land and things that live in the water. Identify one in this picture. Identify one in this picture. Tell me. What's going on in this picture that's an aquatic terrestrial relationship? Is that in the picture? So then say that. Don't tell me when like. If it's in the picture, then it's... So this commercial fishing here... This would be an aquatic, and I want you to put this down, terrestrial relationship. Are there any others? In this picture, are there any other <clears throat> aquatic terrestrial relationships in this picture? What about the snail? No, you're not listening. An aquatic terrestrial relationship is life in water relating to life on land, meaning they have a bond. The commercial fishing, we are on land. We fish for the fish in the water so that we can eat it. Bryson, this is also an aquatic terrestrial relationship. It could. Aquatic terrestrial relationships can create food webs. Any questions about that? Okay. Name that zone. When I pull your number, I want you to name that zone. Number 19, name this zone. Number 19. Don't raise your hand if you're not number 19. That's the oceanic zone. Very good. Number five. Intertidal zone. Very good. Number 12. Hunt neuritic zone, very good. Number one. Intertidal zone, very good. Number four. Very good. Oceanic. Number 17. Very good, intertidal. Number seven. Say it louder. Intertidal, very good. Number 11, this is a tricky one. 11, Brian. You do have the neuritic, but you also have the intertidal, so it's both, good. And you can see way out to the, very good. Um. Number six. Um, Benthic zone. There's your anglerfish. What's wrong with this picture? Ooh. Jenny, uh, um, sorry. Uh, Jayla, this is not kindergarten. Ray? Colorful fish. Where do they belong? Neuritic zone. Very good. Number 27. We don't have a 27 in here. Number three. Um, like, um, With all that sunlight? No. Neuritic. But it's a possibility it could be the oceanic. And I believe this is the last one. Number 18. Uh, Intertidal inter zone. Oh, no, this is the last one. Number 10. tricky it is a stingray Akai is working on it hold on Akai you need to call on the lifeline okay lifeline number nine number nine 
No. No, it's yes. Yep. Look at all that sunlight. Remember, this is not the bottom of the ocean. Quiet. Remember, the neuritic zone is the extended part of the continental shell. All right. And this is actually our last one. Number. We don't do memes. This is for number eight. Come on. Look what's going on there. So this would be what? Neuritic zone. Very good. And then last but not least, I keep saying that. This is number 16. Devin. Good. It, it, you have your colorful fish and then here you have someone swimming with a round jellyfish. Number 12. Durian. Neuritic zone. And now for your homework. Um, Aliyah's gonna come around and pass out um, the homework sheets. I'm going to explain it to you. When you get your paper, please make sure you fill in your name, your block, your number, and the date. For your homework, you are going to draw three main characters from Spongebob. Then you're going to list one marine life, which is the environment, error about the character. Use your notes. Then you're going to write the correction to the errors listed. I've put on your paper this. So you have three spaces to draw the characters. If you've never seen Spongebob, you don't know what Spongebob is, you can always YouTube it if you're not home at the time it comes on. Be careful to the one that you pick because some of them are very inappropriate Spongebobs out there that people have uploaded stupid spoofs. Also, I put a recommended one on my website with the link so you can click on that one and watch that one. So you'll draw your three characters. Then below, you'll write the error after watching the episode or just knowing about an episode. Write a marine life or environmental error about that character. Put your hand down for a second. And then you'll actually write the correction. What should it be? Whatever the error is, what should it be? 